Hello friends and welcome to yet another episode of Economic Sutra. In this episode, I am going to explore the transformation that the city of Mumbai is going through right now. It is one of the biggest transformations that the city has had since independence. There are ambitious projects that will change the face of the city over the next 24 to 36 months. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. First of all, there is the coastal road that will run all along the west side of this city. Then there is a whole network of metro lines that are being put together. 13 of them are being built simultaneously. And we will be looking at line number three, the arterial line that will run through the middle of the city. There is a Trans Harbor link that will link this, uh, the island uh, with the mainland. There is many other projects uh, which we will not be covering in this episode, but you should know are also happening. The new Mumbai airport and in New Mumbai and so on and so forth. And, uh, and many of these projects are going to come together in a very short period of time, in the next 24 to 36 months. In fact, some of these projects will probably come on stream in as soon as the end of 2023. So what we will do is look at some of these projects and give you a flavor of these, what, I mean, engineering marvels, that's what I can say, that are coming together. Now, if you happen to be from Mumbai, you will know why this is such a big deal. Mumbai, even today, essentially functions on two uh, colonial era transport um, uh, infrastructures. There are two parallel highways, and there are two and a half railway lines that allow the city to function. So you can imagine how transformational some of this infrastructure that is coming together will be. And it will all come together, as I said, in 24 to 36 months. So let's go and explore some of these amazing uh, projects. So the very first project that we are going to explore is the coastal road and to speak to us about it is the team leader Vipul Surana who is um, right here with me. Hi Sanjeev. So welcome to the show. Hi Sanjeev, thanks a lot for giving me this chance. So and tell yeah. us a little bit about this amazing project that you are putting together. Okay, so this project is unique in its kind because it gives that flexibility to Mumbai for the South Mumbaikers to go all the way to the north, we've got this uh, long chainage of 10 kilometers for the first phase. Then it goes on to join the Verli Bandra Sea Link and goes into the north phase, which is the phase two, which is being done by MSRDC. The phase one is being done by MCGM. And this project has a lot of challenging and amazing things, but as a civil engineer, it's a dream project. It has everything that a civil engineer can dream of, including reclamation, seawall, bridges, tunnel, roadworks, underpasses, see what you name it and it's there for an engineering dream. Wow, this sounds great. But give us a flavor of where it's going from. So it starts out in Nariman Point? Yeah, it starts at Nariman Point. Yeah. And we go all the way, all the way through the Marine Drive, go under the Marabar Hills to the uh, uh, to the Amerson Gardens, Haji Ali, and then we go towards the Verdi Park. And I'm Park. told at Haji Ali there's a whole in section yeah, of interchanges. So we've, so. Got, we've got three amazing interchanges which are unique in that sense that we've got 10.5 kilometers of the total length of the actual run or actual runway, but we've got another 15 kilometers of interchanges length. So that makes it unique in the sense it's got three amazing maze-like interchanges, which will be one of its kind in India. And we've got about four parking lots, which will give us 1800 spaces of car park, which is again unique to Mumbai. Other than that, we've got about 110 hectares of landscape which at the moment is a big miss in Mumbai. So I think that gives it the... So the public spaces... That the public would... spaces is amazing. Then we've got, you know, if you ask me about the key challenges that we faced, we've got some unique things that we've done in the project for the first time, like 
we did a uh, the TBM in itself, the the boring machine, which the tunnel that we've taken under the Malabar Hills is 12.9, 12.1 meters in diameter, outside diameter, and 11 meters as an internal diameter, which is the largest in India. No one has done this kind of a TBM. Other than that, we've got many other first of its kind. We've done the monopile on this project, which uh, is a unique way of uh, you know doing the piling system or the foundation for a major sea crossing or bridges and there what we've done is we've substituted the group of pile to a monopile and that helps in a safer execution and faster execution so this technology or this innovation by the engineers is amazing so this then connects through yeah onto the uh, bandra ceiling yes and then carries on on the other side all the way to, to Varsova. yes so this is this is as i said uh, you know, anybody who has ever lived or worked in Mumbai will right. know what a big deal this is. Absolutely. So this is going to, how, how, how much uh, savings do you see from this? So I think the way we, uh, the way we were uh, envisaging is usually from, suppose someone is coming from airport and going to south of Mumbai, he usually takes about one hour, 40 minutes, one hour, 20 minutes, depending on the traffic. But with this, we will make this all the way in 20, 25 minutes. So that's an amazing saving. That gives the wellness for people, that gives family time, that gives... And then the landscape that we are doing, as I just mentioned, that will give them the... So what, it's, it's like a marine drive all the way along all the, the way. west coast. Exactly. The, like, too, you mentioned that we've got about uh, 20 meters of promenade. You know, you see uh, parts of promenade as you go along this. But once we have this up and running, we'll have a non-stop 10.5 kilometers of promenade, which goes all the way from marine drive to Worli. And that's going to be 20 meters wide and people will be just having great time walking all the way non-stop. So it's going to have cycle lanes, everything is there. Fantastic. Yeah. So now comes the real question. When can I uh, go for my cycle ride or run along this uh, long promenade? That's an interesting question and we, we have had all our challenges on this project but we are really keen to finish this as soon as possible which today as of now I can say with a lot of confidence that we'll be up and running by November 23. November 23? Yeah. So one year from now? Yes. Wow. And even if there are some delays and some things, the, you, you're some looking at, you know, early 24, early 24 be up and running. Absolutely. Wow. I mean, this is just amazing. So friends, you've, you've heard it. You can see um, right behind me all the construction work that's going on. And uh, I'm told, in a little over a year, I've, we will all be able to go for a walk, run, drive along this uh, amazing path. We've had some world records on this also, which I would like to, before we finish off. Right. You know, we've had 456 meters of mining in a month, which has never happened. It's a record on if, of its own. We've had 1900 tons of lowering operation in one go. And we've also had about 1900 of rotation in one go. These are 180 degrees rotation. These are unique in its kind. And also we are introducing a saccado system of ventilation inside the tunnel, which is going to be an IT tunnel. And lastly, traffic management control system is going to be as comparable to the London Orbital M25 and things like that. So we are trying to make it world class and wish and all with all the hard work of all the stakeholders, we are very sure to get it up and running by November 23. So, Vipul, all the best. This is an absolutely amazing thank you. project. Thanks a lot, and Sandeep, thank for giving you for us. Thank you for hosting us and showing us around. Thank you. This uh, project uh, starts from Princess Street flyover till Amarsen's Garden, which is comprising of two packages, package 4 and package 1. And uh, this particular portion is uh, part of tunneling, which is uh, 4 km length. And out of that, uh, the stretch where we are standing right now is the place where our TBM was launched uh, this year itself in the month of April. And uh, this is made out of the TBM, uh, which is named as Maula. This is India's biggest diameter tunnel, TBM which is 12.19 meter outer dia and the segments are inner dia is 11 meter. The, the most uh, challenging aspects of this tunnel was uh, about its launching and uh, also uh, which was uh, since the entire sh shield body was more than 1500 tons and uh, the rest of the gantries were also in the range of 400 to 500 tons, the lowering was a lot of challenge for us and we did it in one go while we launched it the previous year from uh, near the Pridarshini Park 
in which we load in one go, which is 1500 tons of uh, shield, uh, followed by the backups and the cutter head also. So that was uh, one of the first of this kind of weight and uh, dimension, the first in India, only second or third overall in the world. After that, uh, the second, uh, the first drive was completed and we rotated the TBM on its axis. That also was for the first time such a heavy load, which is 1500 ton to be rotated from a turntable. Uh, that was also challenging and in fact, innovation came to our rescue because uh, the constraint and the all overall uh, the, the logistical and the problems were there in the, in the middle of the hustle of the city. So we managed to do that thanks to our team, uh, completely indigenous efforts. And uh, also, uh, very recently in the month of July, we have uh, surpassed uh, one of the known uh, within this capacity, the world record of uh, uh, this tunneling in a month, in which we have completed 456.742 running meter in a month. So uh, that's a, uh, one more reason for us to uh, be, be proud of our uh, team and uh, of course, uh, uh, being the first of its kind of PBM in India, uh, we surfaced to the new benchmark. That's a proud moment for our team. And uh, subsequently, once the TBM uh, breakthrough somewhere in the month of December, uh, we are planning to take out the TBM also again in one go. And this uh, about this stretch, this is total four kilometers. So next, hopefully by September next year or October next year, we should be in a situation in which we'll be completing all the rest of the works. So that's all about this package, package 4 and then there is a package 1 also behind which is starting from Amarsons to Haji Ali and the work is also in full go. Uh, there are a lot of uh, interchange and elevated uh, stretch of bridges going on, a lot of innovation there also. Uh, launching girder, underslung, in situ, precast, a lot of works are going on and a lot of interfaces in terms of uh, people because it's in the middle of Mumbai so you have a lot of uh, interface with people, the traffic, the utilities. And uh, also the two more things is there that we are using for the first time saccado system of ventilation in the tunnels, uh, which is also being used for the first time in India. Uh, it's generally you'll find it in uh, Western developed countries that's been used here. We have uh, also other safety mechanisms such as traffic control management uh, system uh, that's also been used for the first time. We have uh, structural fire protection of the tunnel. Uh, so all in all, it's a world class product which we are delivering right in the middle of Mumbai. Uh, it's a good teamwork and uh, we hope by uh, once we complete this project, it will be a milestone. This is the coastal road which is categorizing for the road from Bandra Valley Sailing, the early end of Bandra Valley Sailing to the marine drive. So this road is conceived by BMC for reducing the travel time, to reduce the noise pollution and to have effective mobilization of people from west on the western side of Mumbai. So this is one of the finest project being conceived by BMC and this will reduce the travel time of people from 45 minute to 60 minute now to 13 to 14 minutes after completion of this project. So this project consists of reclamation, the road over reclamation, bridges, interchanges and uh, many other structures like development, promenade and many other structures like this. So the one of the uh, beauty of this project is uh, biggest promenade, wide, widest promenade, promenade of 20 meter width and people will be able to walk from early end of Bandra Valley ceiling up to Priyadarshini Park which is about 7 kilometers and this would be one of the fantastic uh, gift by BMC for the people living in Mumbai. Other area uh, in this uh, particular project is uh, the BMC will be developing around 50 hectares of green belt over there and there will be gardens, there will be beautiful uh, cycle tracks and uh, promenade. So many other facilities will be provided by BMC and as far as road is considered, this is a flexible road pavement bitumen or constructed with bitumen and the interchanges and bridges will be constructed over marine zone inside the sea. One of the innovative technology what Hindustan Construction Company and uh, Hyundai Development Corporation has adopted in this particular project is monopile construction technology. As against uh, the group pile technology which is being adopted everywhere in bridges over India. So in place of four pile system, we are constructing only one pile 
and above one pile there will be a pier and the pier will be connected to pier cap. So uh, when we started with construction of this particular project, we found that there is a hard rock uh, just at the ground level and we will not be able to uh, secure our coffer dam which is, the which is the necessary construction technique for the marine works. So uh, seeing this very uh, hard rock at the surface, uh, we proposed BMC to adopt for monopole technology and BMC uh, after visiting UK and after having lot of deliberation with IIT and many experts in the field. So uh, they approved our proposal and they insisted to go with the monopole technology for this particular project. The road is being constructed on the reclamation so uh, the filling material is being filled inside the sea for the width of 70 meter to 115 meter. Uh, for package 2, Hindustan Construction Company and Hyundai Development Company has uh, procured almost 30, met, 30 lakh metric ton of uh, uh, gravels and crushed stone aggregate from New Mumbai which uh, the quarries are more than 55 kilometer from uh, this uh, site and uh, for securing the reclamation field we are constructing the sea wall. Sea wall consists of armor stone which is, uh, which is to protect the heavy sea waves and uh, shore protection. So these armor stones are also of natural stone uh, material. These are weighing 2 ton to 4 ton and we are taking special blast in Navi Mumbai to get this material. This is one of the mega project which will change the geography of Mumbai and uh, we, are we are working over here 24 by 7. Uh, you can see today uh, this is the night time and still people are working everywhere and 24 by 7 marine works as well as land works are happening all the time throughout the day throughout the night and uh, with the support of BMC and our consultant we are hopeful that this project will be completed by September 2023 which is the deadline given by the government of India. As you can see right behind me there are two bays, uh, the right side bay is for the main bridges uh, where we are casting segments and the left bay, uh, left side bay behind me is uh, the interchanges, uh, segment casting process is ongoing. Uh, as we have uh, huge structures in this uh, very package too, uh, can be named as uh, main bridges as well as interchanges, the segment casting process uh, is ongoing uh, behind me uh, in the temporary uh, facility uh, that is uh, the casting yard which is established right behind me. There are four gantries uh, working right just uh, uh, in the backyard uh, which are um, uh, doing the continuous uh, process of segment casting for the superstructure of main bridges as well as the interchanges. So each uh, bay uh, at the right side uh, is working on the segments of uh, around 8 to 10 tonnage each and on the left side there is a casting of segments of around 5 to 6 tonnage is ongoing. The daily productivity for each bay is around 5 to 6 segments per day and it reaches to uh, around 30 segments per month. So this is a temporary facility that has been established and uh, where we are standing right now is where the original alignment of the coastal road will go on and the main carriageway of the coastal road will go on which will which will eventually connect with the Bandra Valley Sea Link. Exactly where we are standing right now is the main carriageway of the coastal road project. The coastal road project main carriageway will directly eventually connect with the Bandra Valley Sea Link. We also have a jetty, temporary jetty constructed right here in the project that the jetty is used for uh, the mobilization of uh, marine logistics through marine vessels as well as the uh, huge jackups which carries uh, uh, 150 tonnage cranes over, the, over them for the construction of marine structures just like uh, the main bridges we have which is connecting with the Bandra Valley ceiling. Hello friends, I'm at Hutatma Chowk, one of the major stations of line number three of Mumbai's metro system. This line 
is uh, absolutely critical to the city. It will be traversing the entirety of the length of the city starting from um, the Kaf Parade and going all the way up to Goregaon. Uh, and with this arterial line, uh, it will be almost on day one, one of the most important metro lines in the world. Uh, it will be passing through of course the old part of the city, then going underneath bridges, old uh, uh, UNESCO World Heritage Sites, under bridges, under uh, train lines and of course office buildings all the way up to the north of the city. It's an engineering marvel at multiple levels and uh, as you will see in the images that will follow, um, the extraordinary amount of uh, world class engineering that is being put in uh, there. So friends, to speak to us about this extraordinary project, I have with me the man who is getting it all done. This is Chief Project Manager, Mr. Rajesh Mittal, who is uh, building this station here at Hutatma. And uh, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the entire Line 3 project. Um, how big is it um, and so on. Uh, sir, this line, Metro Line 3, is almost 33 kilometer long and it's a fully underground line. And for doing this 33 kilometer of tunneling, we have to create two tunnels. One is upline and another one is downline. We deployed 17 tunnel boring machines. And this entire line is having around uh, total 27 stations. Out of that, 26 stations are underground. One station is at grade just before entering to the depot areas. And our depot is in RA. So, what are the difficulties you faced when you um, tried to build a line through a living city like Mumbai? In fact, sir, uh, creating any underground structures or doing any type, such type of infrastructure work for a Mumbai-like city which is having congested uh, city and narrow roadways and we, uh, that, uh, we are very close to urban sea. We, our one tunnel is just passing 30 meters away from our BMC at Cafe Bread area. At the same time, we are passing through just below the heritage building which is UNESCO certified. Particularly at this station itself, Rutatma, you will find that whole length is heritage building. And one platform is being constructed through NATAM which is new Australian tunneling technique. In this, what we are doing, we are doing drilling and blasting in a controlled manner. And for this particular station to take care vibration limits, we have controlled uh, vibration limits up to the tune of 2.54 mm per second. So, uh, I am sure when you were building this, uh, you had to do a lot of innovations. I am told there were many things that were done for the very first time anywhere in the world in order to get this done. Can you give us a sense of the sheer engineering that went into this? Since in Bombay, we are finding change of geological strata number of times because uh, Typically, this Bombay city is made of seven islands. So, between two islands, there is backfill area. So, suddenly we are mining through a solid hard face. Suddenly, we are entering into soft strata. So, that's the type of uh, controlled tunneling we faced in uh, Bombay, uh, particularly in this Metro Line 3. One scenario, what we had did, it, which is uh, we did in first time in India, at least in India first time, I can say. We uh, did our tunneling just below the Mithai River in BKC area. Our uh, tunnel of around 300 meters is just below the Mithai River. So, river is uh, just running above the, our tunnels and we created our tunnels, metro tunnels just below the river. So, one challenge, uh, this is a, I can say, miracle which we did in the engineering la uh, language. So, as you can see, uh, viewers, um, there is some real difficult engineering that has gone into this. Um, Tell us, um, what is the sorts of timelines that we can expect? I mean, this station looks like it's getting getting there, but there is a longer line and by which point will, um, you know, ordinary citizens uh, be able to, uh, you know, take a train uh, on this line? Sir, so we are planning to open this line in two phases. Our first phase we will try to open somewhere in December 23. We have already started our trial run. And we have already received our rolling stocks and this trial is already in progress from Rol Naga to RA. And hopefully by end of December 23, the uh, normal 
general public can use this line and entire line will be available by September 24 from Cafe Bread to Arc. So just imagine, not so far from now, maybe 20, maybe some 24 months from now at most, uh, you will be able to take a train from Cuff Parade and go all the way up to uh, RA in Goregaon uh, using this line and as I have uh, said uh, earlier, uh, this will really uh, in itself uh, be good enough to transform Mumbai as a city. Yes. Thank you very much uh, you, uh, Mr. Mintel and uh, thank you for hosting us here. This is the Mumbai Trans Harbour Link, where we are now standing. This project, the Mumbai Trans Harbour Link, is a dream that has been since 1957. And it is now being realized. And if I tell you, this, relate, this relates to the, the dream and vision of Honorable Prime Minister about the $5 trillion economy and the $1 trillion economy of Maharashtra. You should not be surprised. Because this Mumbai Trans Harbour Link is not just a transportation project. It is an engine, it will be an engine of economic growth of not only MMR region but for the entire country. What is the reason? Reason is very simple. Mumbai is the financial capital of the country. However, it is constrained by geography. It is an island city. But come December next year, it will be a thing of the past. Mumbai will no longer be constrained by the constraint of geography. It will become directly connected within 10, min 10 to 12 minute distance with the mainland of India directly. So just imagine the way the logis logistics industry, the way the manpower, the way the finished products and raw materials will be support, transported to Mumbai and from outside from Mumbai and toward to Mumbai is going to be a different way the Mumbai is going to function which hitherto is working north-south but will now go east-west. That is the first point. Second, of course, it will generate huge employment potential and also will gov state government is also planning to do some regional growth centers on the mainland con being connected by this Mumbai Trans Harbour Link. So this project is an also an engineering marvel because the technology that is being used uh, is for the first time being experimented successfully in India that is the orthotropic steel decks. So orthotropic steel deck, you know, each one of them weighs about, if I tell you, you should not be surprised, about six jumbo jet aircrafts. So they, this ensures the higher spans, uh, longer spans and higher spans, so that the navigation of the ships on the sea is not obstructed. And the, even the fishermen who are poor or who well, not so well to do, they can, their boats can go below the bridge and their livelihoods are also protected. And a very important aspect of this bridge is, of course, the environmental protection. Because we use, here there are a lot of Siberian cranes come here. So, in fact, our construction is such that they continue to come. And in fact, they this year they came, almost a record number of Siberian cranes had come here and gone. The reason is that we used something called RCD, uh, Reverse Circulatory Circulation Drilling, which ensured there is minimum disturbance to environment while drilling in the seabed. So this project will not only connect Mumbai to finally summarize to the rest of MMR, but as I said in the beginning, it will be an engine of economic growth and it will be a dream come true for all Mumbaikers and for all Indians. So viewers, you've just seen the amazing uh, infrastructure projects that are now happening in Mumbai. So. In order to take this conversation for forward, I'm now going to speak to a very special guest, um, the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister of Maharashtra, Sri Devendra Fadmanavis ji. So welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. And um, well, the viewers will already have seen the extraordinary projects and how fast they are uh, progressing. So maybe what you can do is give us a flavor of the overall vision of Mumbai for the 21st century that you are putting together? See, basically, uh, you know, Mumbai is a financial capital. It's a, one of the most vibrant cities uh, in India. Also a very uh, vibrant global city. 
and uh, uh, Mumbai has its own character. So, we always want to keep the character of Mumbai intact and we wanted to build a, a very new resilient Mumbai. The basic problem with Mumbai is it is a coastal city, so it is a landlocked city. Uh, land has always been a problem in, in, in Mumbai. So, the usable space in Mumbai is very little and uh, you see Mumbai is from south to north. It's, it, it is in the length, it has limitations on the breadth. So, taking into consideration all, all, all these problems, uh, we wanted to design a very robust uh, you know system for Mumbai, uh, for the commuters, for, uh, for the vehicles and that is why we started building all the new infrastructure projects. Uh, just to tell you this coastal road which we are building, uh, this coastal road will be absolutely decongesting the, the western side of, of Mumbai. And uh, you know that, that there was a very unique thing uh, about this coastal road that uh, when we, uh, we thought of building a coastal road uh, in our all uh, central government's uh, environmental notifications, a coastal ha a bridge was allowed. Yes. But the coastal road was not allowed because right. coastal road is reclaimed. Yes. And uh, that was uh, quite ridiculous, but uh, I think from uh, years together this practice was there. Right. So, I went to the central government, uh, we sat for uh, uh, at least 5-7 times in a meeting. I must thank our Prime Minister uh, Modi ji, he is a real visionary leader. When I went to him, he called the officers and he said that uh, when we allow a sea bridge and world over there are coastal roads, yes. why can't we allow? After Marine Drive yeah. is yes. also a coastal road. Yes, it is a coastal road. And it is on reclaimed absolutely. land. Absolutely. And we are all very proud yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, then uh, you know, uh, the permission was given. Hmm. And I think now the iconic road is being built, but we will not stop at that because the coastal road will take you from Marine Drive to, to Verli. From Verli to Bandra, there is already a road. Yes. From Bandra to Warsaw, one more sea link we have started building. Okay. That is also awarded and that work has also begun. And from Warsaw to Virar, hmm. now we are planning one more link. Right. So, it will be like a absolute uh, ring uh, road hmm. type of uh, along the structure coast. along the coast. Hmm. And this Western Expressway carries 60 percent of the Mumbai traffic. Right. So, all that traffic will be mostly accommodated on, on, on these highways and uh, Mumbai will be decongested. Having said that, we are also increasing uh, you know our uh, commutation cap capacity through metros. Yes. So, our metro 3 uh, which is a, a very unique 40 kilometers of uh, underground metro network that will be the lifeline of Mumbai. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is supposed to be carry uh, around uh, you know 1.7 million passengers per day. Yes, and in fact, we saw the at uh, Horniman's uh, uh, circle that how the they have gone to the bottom and they have built this amazing uh, thing with all these heritage buildings on top. Yeah. So it's an amazing engineering feat to it's have been able to. Absolutely amazing. Not only that, the way it goes through uh, below the Mithi River. Yes. Uh, the way it goes through various iconic buildings is something very amazing. So, so help us imagine yeah. that in say this is going to all finish in two three years time. Yeah, yeah. Imagine Mumbai, life in Mumbai after these four five projects, including by the way the Mum new Mumbai airport. Yeah. That also. How would life be? How would you imagine a young person who comes to Mumbai to work? How would his life be? So today, uh, most of the life of Mumbaikers is the word is not good, but wasted in commutation. Yes. You know, his golden hours hmm. are wasted in commutation. Commutation. I used to, by the way, yeah. work in uh, I used to live in Borivili and uh, work in uh, so you, you uh, Nariman Point. So I know the <laughs> <laughs> know the feeling. <laughs> so the entire planning was that from any place to any place in Mumbai, one should reach within less than one hour. That is the planning mm -hmm. and we are also trying to integrate the entire uh, you know transportation system. So, right now our suburban railway is lifeline of Mumbai. This suburban railway carries uh, around 9 million passengers. The new metro network which we are, uh, we are, which we are creating will be carrying around 7 million 
or 8 million passengers. Almost doubling. Almost doubling. Right. We are almost doubling it. Mm. So, you know, that will ease, uh, bring the will ease really of competition. Change, change, change it, it, it will life. totally change. Yeah, it will totally change. And, and in addition to this transportation networks that you're changing, what are the other things you're doing? Slum redevelopment. Yeah. You, uh, so, all of these, how do, can you give us a sense of what are the yeah. other things so, you're doing? So I'll, I'll just finish this much. Right. So, again, uh, the Trans Harbor Link, which we are building, mm -hmm. that's a 22 kilometers of sea bridge. Mm -hmm. It's a it's the longest ever sea bridge built in India, okay. and uh, that's also uh, one of its kind. Hmm. Now, essentially, what it will do, it will connect us to the hinterland. Hmm. So today we have Mumbai, we have New Mumbai, that will be the third Mumbai. Hmm. That will be a landmass which will be bigger than Mumbai, mm -hmm. with New Mumbai Airport, and with Trans Harbour Link linked to uh, the South Mumbai uh, within half an hour, right. that will change the entire growth of Mumbai. We, are, we have already started uh, you know, planning new townships there. There right. will be uh, thematic townships okay. uh, uh, in that area. And uh, we, we call it Naina, so that is New Mumbai Airport Influence mm -hmm. uh, Area. Yes. In the Naina area, we are creating entire new townships, mm -hmm. which will be the third Mumbai. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, uh, the future growth mm -hmm. of Mumbai mm -hmm. is on that side. On it's that a, side. It's on that side. Because, you know, the new Mumbai airport will also yes. be there. It will unlock a lot. Yeah, of absolutely. The, the land, because today, mm -hmm. Mumbai being a landlocked city uh, has many restrictions. Mm -hmm. But there is no restriction because it's a huge area. You mm -hmm. can expand to yeah, uh, you can uh, any stage. It, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Coming to the slum uh, uh, redevelopment, mm. we yesterday itself we took a very uh, good decision of transferring some railway land to Dharavi redevelopment project. Now this Dharavi redevelopment project will be the most unique project uh, ever done because you know Dharavi is supposed to be the biggest slum in the Asia, mm -hmm. and uh, this Dharavi redevelopment uh, was visualized by none other than Rajiv Gandhi. It was in 1985. But nothing happened. I mean, uh, until 2014, when Modi ji came and we started governing Maharashtra as well, we actually uh, debottlenecked all the, uh, you know, issues in Dharavi and then we came out with a, with a tender for redevelopment. Somehow we understood that unless we have, uh, uh, you know, a place to rehabilitate people, which is nearby Dharavi, this project uh, will not take off. And then we found out that there is a around 42 acres of land uh, which belongs to railway, where they have some structures and and also. And where is this roughly? It's it's in Dharavi itself. It's in Dharavi. It's itself. just just next to Dharavi. Right. And there are some uh, some few uh, uh, hutments also uh, right. on that land, some slums. So we approached the central government, we told them that we'll free up your land, hmm. we'll use this, we'll buy your land and we'll give you share in the profit. Okay. And with that, yesterday we entered into a definitive agreement. They have handed it over to us. We have it's already, already handed, uh, over. handed over. Wow. Now already we have come out with a, with a bid, uh, bid to redevelop uh, Dharavi. I was just taking uh, you know, information yesterday. So now seven bidders have come. So it's a huge response. What is response. the time, time frame? So time frame will be seven years. Okay. Because it's such a big, uh, you mm -hmm. know, area. But, but the first but phase. But just, just imagine, mm -hmm. just imagine that you have seen BKC. Most of yes. us have seen BKC. Yes. Just imagine Dharavi turning into BKC. That's wow. the idea. Wow. That's the idea. So there will be beautiful, uh, you know, uh, rehabilitation of people. Mm -hmm. And then there will be commercial space created. And Dharavi is just not a slum, mm. but it's also a great manufacturing cluster. Yes, it's In an organic. Absolute ma organic manufacturing, manufacturing cluster. Yeah. So what I did that while planning this entire Dharavi, uh, uh, you know, uh, redevelopment scheme, we have created areas mm. for this entire manufacturing. And today, you know, uh, so, in, in a sense, you're not uh, turning Mumbai completely into a service center. You're going to maintain uh, a sort of organic mix of uh, all kinds of Absolutely, activities. absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the basic idea is, you know, right now, all of them are working in informal sector. So, I mean, 
nobody is paying yes. GST, nobody is doing yes. anything. So you'll formalize. We'll them. formalize, but to formalize them, what we have done for five years, mm -hmm. we'll not charge them GST. Okay, but then they get then upgraded. Uh, they get upgraded and they start paying GST. So entire informal sector will come into formal sector right. and there will be entire transformation. Likewise, even when you land in uh, Mumbai on this uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj mm -hmm. terminal, you can see a lot of uh, slums around. There are almost 50,000 slums around. Yes. So we are actually redeveloping that also. Okay. And with that redevelopment, can you imagine that we will free up mm -hmm. 100 acres of land for the airport. Wow. It's a land of airport authority and we'll house, uh, after housing the people. Uh, this is after housing everybody, uh, yeah. you get an extra headway. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that, that's also planned and uh, we have entered into a MOU with the, mm -hmm. with the central government. Uh, hopefully, final decision will also come very soon. Well, now I have to say, after hearing all of this, uh, I am going to move to uh, Mumbai uh, <laughs> from Delhi. Uh, so, I think Delhi has to up its game. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I think next three years, this entire transformation will be evident. Wow, this is, sounds so exciting. But of course, you are doing things outside of Mumbai as well. Uh, I believe one of your favorite projects is a link of a highway between Mumbai and Nagpur. And that will create like a sort of an anchor transportation net, uh, thing which goes right through the uh, uh, heart of uh, Maharashtra. So can you give us a flavor of what would happen once you finished all of this in Mumbai and then it links through to all the way through to Nagpur? So this, uh, you know, expressway, we hmm. call it Samruddhi Expressway. It will be a new economic corridor because this expressway will connect 14 districts to the JNPT port. JNPT yeah. port is our biggest port and JNPT port uh, accounts for 60% of our container uh, traffic. Now, you see, uh, world over, the port-led development mm -hmm. is a model of economic growth. Mm -hmm. But up till now, this port-led development, the fruits have reached uh, Mumbai, MMR region, Nasik mm -hmm. and the area around Pune, mm -hmm. not beyond that. But now this will extend up to it open Nagpur. all the yes. way so how many hours and does it take to go from Nagpur so now to here? Uh, you see this this is a very unique road this mm -hmm. this would be uh, the smartest road ever built okay and uh, uh, for 700 kilometers of uh, greenfield road we have acquired the entire land in just nine months okay which is also a record and now the road is built uh, first phase of the road uh, will open up next month second phase also by end of uh, um, uh, uh, May or uh, June uh, next year right. and you know earlier from Nagpur to Mumbai it used to take 14 to 16 hours okay. now through this road you can come in 8 hours it's, basically it's, you are having yeah, the it's time absolutely so its design speed is 200 km per hour but uh, well, hopefully uh, nobody but, is going but, to drive but, it. No, no, but it's <laughs> not allowed in India. So now it is restricted to 150 km per hour okay. so we, we say we that like it's an a, autobahn yeah yeah it's like an autobahn and on the entire stretch, right. there will be no toll. Okay. It will be only on entry and exit. So, okay. there, once you start from Nagpur hmm. and if you want to drive to Mumbai, you can stop. Goes right you, you can drive non-stop. It's the, uh, another major thing on this road is that while acquiring the land for road, we also plan for, uh, you know, fast rail. Mm -hmm. So, that is also uh, uh, the right of way stay with us. I actually had a... Uh, meeting with the railway minister and we have planned that on this road we will we'll bring the high speed rail and not just high speed rail but high speed cargo rail. Okay. So that will create entire you know uh, ecosystem for uh, economic growth. Developing with her yeah. and all those and, areas. And on, on this road there will mm -hmm. be two dry ports, mm -hmm. one at Varda, one at Jalna. These dry ports will be the satellite ports of, uh, of uh, JNPT. JNPT. So the entire shipment can be done at the at the and satellite then port. Yes, internally goes through. Internally goes through. Wow. So it's a, it's a it's a it's a great economic corridor which we are creating. So I mean I'm I must say this is really impressive, particularly since I've seen the sheer scale of some of these projects. Also, what I like is the ambition of it. And um, you know, one of the problems I think of India after independence was we somehow never aspired to do things in sheer scale. You know, Mumbai till now. Uh, still functioning on colonial era infrastructure. Uh, 
uh, you know, the British built it and we have to continue with yes. it. I think for the first time, I, what, what I can see here is that we Indians <laughs> are building things in scale to, you know, transformational change. So thank you very, very much for uh, doing this interview and for uh, taking, uh, you know, taking this very bold decision forward. Thank you. So uh, viewers, with that, uh, uh, let me say that uh, you've seen, uh, uh, you know, many of the interesting projects that are being done. Uh, in Mumbai and of course you have also met the man behind it all. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So friends, I hope you got a flavor of some of these amazing transformational projects that are happening in Mumbai. As I said right in the beginning, these are the largest infrastructure projects in Mumbai since independence and they will transform this city. This is important. We are a country that are already the world's fifth largest economy. And by the end of this decade, we will be the world's third largest economy. So we should aspire for a commercial and financial capital truly worthy of the world's third largest economy. So with that, let me sign out from this particular episode. Hope to see you at the next episode of Economic Sutra right here in Sunset TV.